All right, welcome back and thanks for tuning in again. So today we're actually going to work on a small engine. This is a 1947 Briggs & Stratton Model A. Uh, I picked it up, it was for sale not five miles from the house here, it was on a farm and it's apparently been sitting in a barn for the last I don't know, 30 or 40 years and it looks like it. But apparently it's been on that farm its entire life. So we're going to take a look at it, see if we can get it running. And if we can get it running, I want to actually uh, see what kind of horsepower this thing has left in it. These engines were rated at between one and one and three quarter horsepower when they were new. So I want to see how many horses are left in this little thing. Let's start off by taking a walk around this old Briggs engine. Briggs made the Model A from, I believe, 1933 to 1948. So that's a 15 year production run, which is pretty good. Got our fuel sediment bowl there. The bottom of the tank looks okay. I don't see, well, I don't see any obvious rust. Feels fairly solid. You can see it's kind of packed with dirt and dust and pretty pitted. Definitely sitting in a damp environment. Got like moss growing on the side of the block here. Yeah, so a 15 year production run. This particular one was built in 47. So it is 74 years old at this point in 2021. And they made so many variations of the uh, of this engine. I mean, there were some updates over the years. The earlier engines had a different style carburetor. Uh, most of them had an oil pump. This engine does not have an oil pump. I think this is the first year that they did not have an oil pump. I mean, this is pretty late in production. I mean, they had different, well, obviously they had different types of output shafts different means of starting. Some of them were kick start, some of them were lever start, some of them were crank start. This is pretty much the most common or the most basic version of the Model A that you'll see. Let's take a look at the tag here. It's a little bit hard to read. But still legible. There's Model A right there. There's our type number and our serial and the valve clearance specs. I always like the the design or the shape of these engines. You know, totally built of cast iron. Just an impressive uh, machine. Even the shroud, the shroud is a casting, cast iron. Yeah, there were even different uh, styles of rope cups for the uh, for the starting rope. And we got the throttle cable here, which that's pretty much junk. It's rusted solid. I think the the inner core is actually broken. The inner core is missing here, as well as the spring, the governor spring. So, plans for this engine, we're going to take it apart, see what the innards look like, measure the cylinder bore, measure the piston, measure the bearings, see if we can clean the carburetor up. We're probably going to have to get a, uh, a little rebuild kit for this carburetor, which they're still available. Probably going to have to lap the valves, maybe cut the seats. It does turn over, which is a big plus. It's, it's a bit tight. I haven't turned it, you know, a full revolution yet, but it does turn. Obviously, we're going to have to check the coil, make sure we can get spark out of it. Hopefully, the fuel tank's still good. And really, once once we get it cleaned out, I want to put it back together, get it running. And uh, yeah, we're actually going to hook up a prony brake to the output shaft of this thing and uh, see what it can do. I've changed my uh, plan of attack a little bit here. The first thing I did was pull the carburetor off uh, just because taking the gas tank off uh, from, the, from the mounting bracket was going to be a pain just because of how rusty the hardware is. So I want to take the fuel tank off as a unit which means I had to take the fuel line off and figure it out. Might as well just pull the carburetor off first. So carburetor just held on with two bolts and we got the little oil bath air filter and the 
air intake pipe there. The throttle shaft is actually free on this as well as the, uh, the governor lever. The choke is stuck, but that's okay. This is all going to have to get taken apart and cleaned anyway. So I'm just going to leave the camera rolling while I uh, continue on with the teardown. I've uh, soaked a lot of the hardware down with some croil to help uh, disassembly. So we'll go ahead and see if we can pull the spark plug out. Wire's pretty stiff. I'm not going to try not to bend that too much. The terminal's not really held on there very firmly either. Let's see if this comes out easily enough. Oh yeah, okay. That wasn't all that tight. That doesn't look too bad. Definitely clean up. It's, it's a shame the plug is so pitted because it's a nice plug, a nice shape. Uh, it's an 8-com, which I think is the uh, correct plug for this engine. Let's see if we can get the uh, intake pipe out. It's an inch and a quarter lock nut here. There it goes. That just threads right on into the block. No problem there. I really didn't have to take that out, I think. I could have just uh, worked around it, but it'll make taking the valves out a little bit easier. As far as the exhaust goes, I don't know if I, if I want to touch that. We might be able to just leave this in place. Just because I know there's probably no way I'm going to get that, uh, that 45 degree elbow off of there. I'd probably have to cut it and split it. But uh, we'll come to that. Uh, we'll readdress that in a little bit. All right, let's take the fuel tank off. Uh, let's see, how are they, half inch? Yep. Let's see, oh, okay, that wasn't very tight. Might as well loosen them all up. Yeah, these are not very tight at all. Wow, how about that? Oh, that one's pretty rounded. Ah, there it goes. So we've got three three different lengths of bolts here, so just have to keep that in mind. Couple of larger bolts here. Oh, not, not three quarter. I guess they probably were three quarter, just rusty. Yep. That's quite tight. And that one, I can't even get a socket on, just because of its proximity to the shroud, looks like. Yeah, it's right up against the, uh, the shroud here. Okay, well, maybe we'll have to move on to taking the shroud off. It's okay, I should have the tools for that here. So to take the shroud off, we got to get the rope cup off first, and that, I believe, is a 15 sixteenths. Yep. So I've got the got a little wire wheel on an angle grinder here. There's a little bit of thread still exposed there. Let me flip the screen around so I can see what you're seeing. There we go couple of threads still exposed, so I'm just going to 
hit him with a little wire wheel. about the noise, that compressor's loud. I just wanted to get most of the rust, the loose rust off of them threads so we're not trying to pull the nut off over the rust. And I'm going to cheat and go right to using an impact. First at its lowest setting. And we'll see if we can bump that, that nut off of there. This one is a normal thread, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Starting to move. Let's help it a little bit more with some heat. Oh, did I turn the gas off? Maybe. Yep. going on with my torch here. This thing's been acting up lately. Let's see if that'll help it out a little bit. It's definitely coming off. Rope cup is loose now. See if I can get a little, little croil in behind there, down onto the threads. Yep, there it goes. Still a little toasty there. The threads look like they're in they're in fine shape. Okay. So we got some screws up here and nuts down at the bottom or bolts down at the bottom and for the screws I'm gonna bypass using a normal screwdriver just clean the slots out and we're gonna go right for the impact screwdriver because I those heads are in nice shape and I really don't want to round them out should have a yeah that tip fits in there nice. So we'll just use the impact screwdriver here. As 
see if we can tap those out of there. Where's my hammer at? Oh, maybe I didn't grab the hammer. Okay, let's get back to it. Make sure it's turning in the correct direction here. Uh, that one's moving. So it's either going to twist itself right off or it's going to come out. Ooh, that one's tight. That one's tight. Try to work this one a little bit more. Okay, that one seems like it's going to come out. I think it would have twisted right off already if it wasn't going to. Oh yeah, look at that. Doesn't look like we damaged the head either. This one, let's give that a couple more taps and then maybe we'll move on to the lower bolts. Give this one a chance to think about what, what it's done. Now it's moving. The tip keeps coming out of my screwdriver. It's moving. We still don't know if it's going to shear off yet, though. Well, while that one soaks a little longer, let's move on down to these two. You know what? Let me just take this uh, throttle out of here. Because it's probably just going to break off anyway. Where's my 916 socket at? Oh, I put it back. Oh, it wasn't 9 sixteenths, it was half. I put it back, that's strange. That's kind of getting in the way. Unfortunately, I don't think there's much saving that cable, but the, the throttle handle itself could probably be salvaged. Lean the engine back now. Right on that pulley and take these two out. They look like half inch as well. Yep. They're gonna come right out. All right. Crowd's loose now. Let's work a little bit more at that uh, upper screw there. Okay. Well, that one sound seems like it's ready to come out now. Oh yeah, look at that. No worries. Oh, look at that. All kinds of uh, good stuff in there. Okay. Cast iron shroud. Set that out of the way. Wow, look how packed those the flywheel, not the flywheel, the uh, cooling fins are in the cylinder. Let's take a look at that. Wow. 
Ow. That's uh, quite packed. This engine might have been running a little bit hot the last time it was used. Flywheel looks okay. Got screws here. Uh, pretty much just taking up the holes where the uh, puller is going to mount. No broken fins on the flywheel. All kinds of stuff packed in there. But we have access to that bolt now. So let's, uh, let's try to get those off and take the fuel tank off. And then we'll pull the cylinder head. I'm really curious to see what, uh, what it looks like under the cylinder head. Move the hammer and the impact driver out of the way. And see if we can loosen those three-quarter inch bolts here. Might have to put the impact on these. Kind of shock them loose. Try to bump it with my hand first. No. Don't seem inclined to loosen up. Nope, not in the slightest. Let me grab my little 3 8 impact. All right, got my little 3 8 my little baby 3 8 impact here. And we'll just gonna bump them, see if they break free. I don't know. Doesn't seem like it. Maybe we'll have to go back to the heat. Try to warm this warm this casting up a little bit here. Give the impact another go at it. Hmm. Does not seem. Oh, wait. There it goes. Okay, that's moving. That's good news. I might have to try heat on the other side now. Don't have very good access to the uh, the other bolt or the other casting rather. There's a lot of dirt packed around here as well. Now let's try to apply a little bit of heat here. Get some more of this stuff out. I don't know what's going on here.
torch is just acting very odd. It almost seems to depend on which way I turn it. Which it really shouldn't because the bottle's not attached to it. Alright. Let's try to bump it again. Oh, there you go. A little bit of heat. Pretty long bolt. I'm curious what the inside of this tank looks like. Now, I thought the gas cap was stuck on there. Let's see what it is. Oh, no, okay. Looks like the Croyle loosened that up too. Yeah, kind of. Oh my God, it's pristine. You gotta be kidding me. How can that be? Look at that. It's pristine in there. Wow. That's, cr that's crazy. Oh man, that just made my day. I can't believe that. This engine must be new old stock. <laughs> Obviously not. Wow, that's crazy. Look at the chain's not even rusty. That just made my day. All right, so it's coming apart. Let's pop the cylinder head off and take a peek in there. So we got some spacers on these bolts as well. On what, four of them, five of them? These two are stuck. Yeah, I always like the, 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 the design of these engines. With that cast iron shroud and the, the, the flat head design, where it's obviously a flat head engine, an L head engine, but, um, you can see that the cooling air from the flywheel is driven up around the cylinder and as well up into this area of the head. So the cast iron you're looking at here is just the, the outside of the head. There's actually, you know, ports or holes that run through the head to allow the air to flow through. I just like the look of it. It's kind of streamlined, which would make sense for an engine that was designed and initially built in the 30s. Let me turn the camera light off. I'm going to run my battery down. There we go. Well, I just dumped a whole bunch of rust down the cylinder. Ooh, got some carbon built up there, I would say. Look at that. Big flakes of it. Big flakes of carbon. Leaded gas, I'm sure. I'm sure this engine burned leaded gas for most of its life if not its entire life. Let's take a look at the uh, top of the piston here. And now this is all the rust that I just dumped on it. Let 
I'm just going to gently rotate the engine. Yeah, it's really feeling a bit tight right here. Definitely some moisture on the uh, inside there. Oh, there it goes. Lifting up the exhaust valve. Must have been on the power stroke there. I'm really not using much force just in case we did have a stuck valve. But it seems that we don't. A little sticky, that's for sure. Look at that intake there. Slowly going back down. Yeah, a little sticky. I think we're going to call that enough uh, rotation for right now until we drop the, uh, the bottom of the crankcase off and pull the piston out and go further into it. But before we do that, let's um, pop the flywheel off. I think I'm going to need to use the impact screwdriver again to uh, take these two screws out. That way I can get a puller set up. Set you back on here. Give these a little soak. Get some down on the keyway there. Make sure those grooves are clean. Slots are clean, rather. Yeah, might need the smaller, smaller tip for those. Yeah. I keep leaving that light on the camera. There we go. They don't seem inclined to come out right now. Get a better angle on it this way, maybe. Thought I felt some slop in the bearing there. Definitely feel some end play in the crankshaft, which is not a, not a problem. Let me change to the larger tip here. goes. Sounds like I just knocked part of the shroud off. Huh, I didn't even notice that was part of the shroud there. Okay, that one's coming out. Okay. Alright, well I'm going to go and find the appropriate puller for that real quick, and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm back and ready to pull the flywheel off. Uh, before we do that, I went and I, uh, I kind of scraped off some of the loose dirt from the engine, around the cooling fins and everything, just so we're not making such a huge mess. Uh, I got my puller, but I couldn't find two high strength uh, bolts that were long enough. They're, these are 5 16 uh, 18. So we're just going to see if we can get lucky and use some all thread here. Ironically, I had all thread, but not, not the bolts. That seems kind of strange. So these, these are through holes in the flywheel. So I marked 
the all thread with some red, uh, red paint just so I know not to run the bolts through too far. I don't want to risk uh, rotating the engine and running the tips of those bolts into the uh, ignition coil. Let's see if this flywheel will pop off of here. So it's a die cast flywheel on a steel hub. So if I gotta heat the hub a little bit, I will. See, that looks square. Yeah, it's pretty square. Let's see. Oh, too big. Put a screwdriver in there. pretty tight. Let me see if I can tap the end of the puller and uh, hop that flywheel off of there. See we got some end play in the crank there so I'll just pull that out. Get the screwdriver behind the flywheel a little ways. Put a little bit of tension on it. Give it a little bit more pressure. seem inclined to want to come off. Hmm. Well, while there's tension on it, I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of heat to the center hub there. Not too much heat because it is a it's a die casting on a steel hub so the Expansion rates are going to be a little bit different. Spider's crawling out of it. Waking up the spiders. I think at this point I'm just stretching out those that soft all thread. Give it a couple more taps here. Nope. Alright, I'm going to have to cut the video and work at this a little bit. 
Okay, well I moved the engine over, clamped it to the edge of the bench here so it's not wobbling around. The flywheel is now cool and I've uh, had it soaking. It's probably been about half an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more heat on it, put a little bit more tension on it, and give it a few more taps with the hammer. I'm doing my best to try to concentrate the heat on the steel hub rather than the, uh, the flywheel. Alright, it's about all the heat I want to put on it. See if I can give it a little bit more tension. Wow, that one is really on there. Hmm. I keep slipping here. See, the shroud is supposed to be attached to the magneto plate, and I can see where the rivets have kind of started to pull out, and it's kind of bent up down here. Let's see. Nope, haven't got quite a, haven't got it quite yet. I mean, don't want to break it, so best to just let it cool off and come again, check on it later. Well, it's a day later, and I did manage to get the flywheel off. Sorry I wasn't able to capture it on film, but it ended up I needed to use the puller and a four pound hammer on the end of the puller to shock that uh, taper get that off of there. So that's what the inside of the flywheel looks like. Got a lot of packed in dirt around the uh, the rim. But that's that's normal. Clearly this thing was operating in a very very dusty environment. A lot of fine particulate flying around. So there's the magneto. Yeah that flywheel definitely needed to come off. So man let's take a look at that. Whew, man, that's pretty uh, pretty packed with dirt. You know, it looks all original in here, though. Original condenser, points, even got the little plastic or phenolic cover for the points. Still got the blob of tar there where the ignition lead terminates on the uh, coil. I'm curious to see if that coil is any good. Let me set you up on the stand here. We'll bring the meter over. It might move you back a bit. Just for curiosity's sake. Okay. Whew, man, I don't even know if I can find a decent ground here. Get a little screwdriver and try to find some bare metal here. Go between 
magneto backing plate and I can see some bare copper here. One point seven K. That's really low. Hmm. That is very low. I was expecting something in the neighborhood of four to five thousand K. Four to five thousand ohms. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty low. I wonder well, I would imagine we've got some shorted turns in the secondary there, which who knows, it might still spark, but we might be uh, in the market for a replacement coil, or we might uh, just rewind that one. So let's go ahead and pull the, uh, the whole magneto assembly off, and uh, we'll clean that up later. I'm not going to worry about cleaning all that up now. So it should be one, two, three, and another screw under here. Yep, right there. All right, let me pull that off. Ah, what the heck, might as well keep the camera running at this point. Let's see. Let's see how easily this comes off. Uh, you know what? Nope, it's not these two screws. It's got one down here. These just hold the horseshoe uh, core on for the magneto. Broke a lock washer there. This one, got to move the little hold down for the points cover. Should be able to get that one out. Yeah. Let's see if we can gently kind of pry that off of there. Oh, wait. Got to take the flywheel key out. And looks like we got the seal here. That seems to have dislodged itself from the backing plate. Let's see if we can slide that right off the crankshaft. Yep. Came right off. That's going to need, uh, need a little bit of love there. Little seal popped right out. Hmm. We'll check these bearing journals in a little bit. See how much wear we have. Not running out of bench space. There's a lot of parts in one of these little engines. So first peek inside the crankcase. Still got some oil down there. Might as well drain that oil out. Drain the oil out, and I think the next step, we're gonna we gotta get this pulley off of here. So I was looking at this pulley earlier, and I think it might have to come off of that crankshaft in a destructive manner. Because it's a like a taper, a taper lock type pulley. You can see what's left of the key there. Some extreme pitting. So we got a hex on this side and we've got a hex on this side. And you see this bushing, a split bushing here. It's got a slit there and there is a appears to be a drilled hole above the key there. So it, it looks like the two halves of the pulley thread together to pinch that bushing and I don't think that's going to come off easily. So this pulley may end up getting the uh, the sawzall right down 
right down the sides, right down the edges there, and just, just split it off of there. I don't really need this pulley. I don't think it's historically significant. So it'll save me a lot of effort to just cut it off of there. Once we do that, we can split the base and flip the thing upside down, pull the piston out, pull the crank out, we'll get the valves out, and that's pretty much it. Well, we'll get the camshaft out too. That should be fun. Gotta get that pin out. Right there. Slide that pin out and the camshaft will fall right out. All right, I'm gonna cut that pulley off of there. Now well, let's see what we got in the crankcase here. Oh, water, excellent. Not too much water, just a little bit. Some pretty thick oil there. Oh, managed to get the pulley off the crankshaft. Got a nice clean spot there right in the center where it's not all pitted. So, looks pretty good. Gotta get that key out of there yet. Here's the pulley. It's interesting. It's a, you know, just a stamped sheet metal shiv. And then the, the hub, split hub. Looking at them threads. See, it uh, wasn't going to be fun trying to get that off of there. So, hopefully it's no great loss to the vintage pulley uh, world. So, let's move on. And clamp down to the bench again. Let's see if we can get this base off of here. These bolts look like they were going to be a bit of a problem, but they're not, not too tight. Of course, they're pretty pitted. The other one, I think the casting in the crankcase to clear the camshaft gear is in the way. Or the governor, rather. Let's see if we can get that one out without too much trouble. Okay, not too bad at all. Yeah, except for that flywheel, this engine's really not been fighting me lately. Or, <laughs> except for that flywheel, the engine really hasn't been fighting me at all. I think I said this already in the video, but remember, this is not going to be a rebuild of this engine. We're just taking it apart to see what kind of wear exists on things like the cylinder wall, the piston rings, the connecting rod, and the main bearings, and the valves. And we're going to put it back together after you clean it up, get it running, and actually load it down see what kind of horsepower this thing still has in it. No chunks of anything, that's good. I'm gonna let that drain, and that's gonna go right in the parts washer. All right, let's take a look inside that crankcase. A 
Looking okay. We got the governor there. Here's the oil dipper. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, take the connecting rod bolts off and we'll pull the piston out. Let's see about taking the uh, connecting rod and piston out. Got to bend over these locking tabs. Looks like this has been a, all been done before because you can see there, maybe you can't, where that tab's been bent over once in the past. Sometimes this can be a little tricky. There we go. Sometimes it's difficult to get the screwdriver wedged back there. Oh, I thought I had it. There we go. Okay. Where's my small ratchet? So I think I also mentioned this earlier, this engine does not have an oil pump. The earlier Model A's, well for most of the production run, the Model A did have an oil pump. It was a plunger type pump driven off the cam, but uh, they decided to go with the oil dipper for the rest of production. Either they found that it wasn't necessary to have the pump or it was just a cost uh, savings measure. Mm, that doesn't look that great. No, that doesn't look like th that doesn't look that great at all, does it? But hey, that's what this video is all about. I want to see how much wear this thing really has. Yep, that journal's not in the best of shape. See if I can push the piston right on out of there. There it goes. There we go. Let's see what the upper rod journal looks like. This is going to have a lot of wear. Yep, got some scoring in there and some burnt oil residue. Yeah, there's a deep score right there. Oh well, we're gonna see if it runs. It'll run. I'll slide the crankshaft out now. Maybe not, maybe I've gotta sand this down. Yeah, right on the outside hub of the crankshaft here, there's a little bit of rust. I'm going to go ahead and take some uh, emery cloth, sand that down real quick. That way we can slide the crank out without doing any more damage to that bushing. Okay, let's try that again. Yep, slides right out. Use this extra dirty rag here. Yep. Focused on that. Ooh, that's pretty rough. Well, 
Wow. Yep, this engine did a lot of work in its life. I don't really feel a lot of wear here. I don't feel a lot of wear there either. Looks like the connecting rod took a lot of the brunt. Okay. So, looks like we'll go ahead and we'll pull the governor out. Governor gear is right down in here, driven off the cam. We'll pull that out and then we'll pull the cam out. Looks like we need it says half inch, yep. Tell you up. There you go. This little bracket here looks like it just limits the travel of the governor lever. Yep, that's all it does. Limits the the travel of the the external lever here as well as the internal lever right there. I don't think we need to remove that lever. Uh, nope, we do. We've got to remove the lever and thread out or remove the bushing as well. So that's really crusty, isn't it? There should be a screw under here. Looks like it's right there. Ooh, that might be a problem. See, this lever is cast aluminum here, and we got a steel screw buried under that dirt, and buried under some more dirt. There's a hexagonal well, a bushing that's threaded in the block with a hex head, so we can pull that out. All right, let me clean that up and uh, shoot that with a little bit of croil. Hopefully that screw doesn't break off of there. Well, we got lucky again. That screw was not in there very tight and came right out. So we should be able to gently split this uh, lever open a little bit. I think I'm going to grab a piece of scotch bright right here and try to clean the end of that shaft up a little bit before we slip it through. Okay. Tap on that lightly. See, it comes right off of there. Okay, no harm done. And we got that bushing right there under some more dirt. That shaft should be able to slip right in. Oh, what do we got? Got a cotter pin there. Still in the frame, yep. Pull that shaft right through the inside of the block. Try to, anyway. 
And then it's starting to bind a little bit. Hopefully that shaft's not bent. Probably just dirty. working out a little at a time. Okay. That's that. And what's that bushing? Five eighths? Now, I think we can take the governor gear out. Got a half inch retaining bolt there. Flip this around. Maybe you might be able to see what I'm doing. That's better. Uh, actually, no, that's 7 sixteenths, isn't it? Yep. Not half. Looks like that's all that keeps the governor on the shaft is this bolt with a fender washer on it. Keeps the uh, gear captive. Yep. And out it comes. Wow. That's a uh, that's no good. Those uh, weights are really stiff. This thing would have just gone wide open throttle and would not have recovered because those weights wouldn't have uh, moved out. Okay. And the camshaft. So the camshaft is on a pin, which uh, there's a little cup right here. The end of the pin is right here. And there's typically like a little Welsh plug, almost looks like a freeze plug at the bottom of that hole. Yep, it's still in there. And you're supposed to drive that pin out from the PTO side. And that pin is right in this department here. Can't even see it. Camouflaged by the rust. And you can kind of see it there now, the shadow of it. I'm just going to lean the block over here, lay it flat, because we've got a little bit of travel before it would hit the bench. See if we can get it started with punch. Yep, it's moving. See that? Takes a good firm hit to get it out of there. The dirt and the gasket here isn't really going to cause too much of a problem, I don't think. It's more dirt than rust, I think. But we'll still be diligent and see if we can clean that out with a some scotch bright, clean any dirt out of there. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's pretty clean. So there's nothing really retaining that pin in there except for the fact that it can't come this way toward us because of the magneto plate. see if I can just drive that on out. Eh, this might be another time to bolt the thing down. Not bolt it, but clamp it to the bench. While we drive that pin out of there. There's the little plug, came out the other side. Might need to grab a longer punch, but so I believe this hole is reamed slightly undersized. This hole in the block is reamed slightly undersized compared to this hole. So the pin is the same diameter across its whole length. So it should be a slip fit in this side, but a snug press fit in the other side. All right, you see what's going on here? Now you can. Should be able to pull that right out. And that cam. right out as well. These engines are built really well. That's just a nice part look there, right there. Doesn't appear to be any excessive or out of place wear on the lobes just as a, at a quick glance. Get the pin aside, we don't want to lose that. The only thing I really want to mark are these tappets down here. Make sure I keep that one as the intake and the other as the exhaust. So I'll go ahead and put those in little baggies. Label them. Exhaust. Yeah, that was rotating, but it looks like it wasn't rotating quite like it should. Okay. So the only other thing left is the valves. Take this cover off, pop the springs off, and get the valves out. Now let's see about pulling these valves out. Okay, let me see, can I get you a better angle here? Don't know if this uses keepers or pins to uh, retain the valve springs. Let's see. Seems like those retainers are a little stuck. 
Oh, there it goes. Slip that intake out of there. Where's the screwdriver at? I don't have one of out. Those. See what kind of wear we have on that stem. Intake. Got the keepers. How about the exhaust? We get in there. Yep. There we go. Oh, wow. All kinds of goodies fell out of there. Yeesh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that'll need a little love. Exhaust. Got that spring out of there. Keepers, both of them, and let's see, we have cups up here, yep, get those off as well, don't want to lose them in a parts washer. Little seats for the springs. Keep them, keep them centered over the valve guide. Okay. There's a lot of gunk on that intake. Jeez. What is that? Just a ring of gunk? Yeah, that's all that is. Okay, well. That's about it for the block. Wrong way. I guess we'll pop the breather cap off while we're here. See if that'll come off easily enough. Yep, seems like it. Let me clean all this gunk out of here. Let the crankcase breathe a little bit. Get a 
check valve in here? Looks like we may. Hmm, that inner screen doesn't want to come off, but I don't know. I'll have to look in the book, see if that's a check valve down there. I don't know if it is or not. If it is a check valve, that means we've got to go in there and clean it out. But this little, eh, it's not spot welded. I thought this might have been spot welded to the inside, but it's moving. It's just a little stuck. Wow, it's certainly acting like uh, that tab and the one across from it. It's acting like those two are spot welded in there. So all the other ones are flexing. I believe these are, these cups are just pressed into the block here. This one might be threaded though. You can't see it from the inside because there's a a little splash plate that's riveted to uh, keep oil splash from going right out the breather. Let me look into that. Well, with a little bit of uh, persuasion from the torch and uh, a pair of channel locks here, it appears that the little breather is threaded. The body is threaded into the block. I don't see any threads yet. It might just be pressed in. It seems to be unthreading now. Nope, just pressed in there. Okay. Yeah, threaded in there. This screen is spot welded, so we'll have to we'll have to just soak this and flush that check valve out. It's pressed right in the block there. The only other thing that I forgot about is there's a small little disc type check valve right in here, which allows the oil to drain. the oil from the magneto side bearing to drain back into the block. That little casting boss down there, because there's no real seal here. Well, I shouldn't say that. That That is technically a lip seal, I believe. Right? Yeah, it's a crusty lip seal. So this gap from the bearing, the bushing, between the seal, any oil that collects there, it allows that to drain back into the crankcase, but prevents crankcase pressure from kind of blowing out the, the seal itself. Man, I got stuff all over this bench. All right, so that's what uh, half inch. We should be able to just thread that right out. So I'm going to throw all of the parts in the parts washer, get them all cleaned out. And we'll come back and uh, we'll start doing our measurements to see how much wear this engine has sustained.